those larger species of sharks. <laughs> Hollywood's actually done a very good job of making monsters out of sharks. But in reality, there are over 400 different species of sharks in the world, and fewer than 10 of those species have ever been known to attack humans. How come the not eating these attacks generally occur when people are encroaching on sharks feeding or um, reproduction territories? Generally, the shark has, is either defending its young or its nest, or they have mistaken, say, a person in a wetsuit for one of its more common prey items. Oh, there's an octopus. Oh, why is this going past? A shark took that in the mouth and he ate it. Their next meal. Some species have a very highly developed sense of smell, and they're actually able to detect a single drop of blood in the water from more than 500 meters away. Sharks are able to hear. Sound actually carries better through water than it does through air, which is one of the reasons why we ask you not to touch the shark tank, because it sounds very loud to the sharks when you do. Although you can't see ears on the sharks, their eardrums are internal. Sharks are also able to detect vibrations in the water around them. They possess a lateral line which runs down the sides of their body. They share the sensory organ with other species of fish. But sharks also have a series of electrosensory organs that are situated all around their snout. These actually allow the shark to detect very tiny electrical impulses in the water. And it's actually the great oval-shaped guy with the little yellow fins that you can see flitting around at the front of the tank. That's Mr. Bubbles. Mr. Bubbles is a Dusmiri Tang, and he earned his name for his penchant of uh, standing head first in the bubble column there in the coral. We also have Doug. Doug is our big speckled grouper. And then we have Eel. Eel, the green moray eel. We also have a number of other smaller fish that live in the coral work in the center. And they're all members of the damsel family. Here at Big Al, yeah. we feed our sharks once a week. There's a very good reason for this. Our sharks um, they're approximately four feet long, and they're about as big as they're going to get in this tank. And because of that, their metabolism is considerably slower than it would be if they were younger and still growing out. <laughs> Sharks also have a very efficient digestive system. Unlike us, they're able to turn almost 100% of what they eat into usable energy. So we feed this tank about 10 pounds of fish on a weekly basis, and that's actually quite a bit more than a shark would eat. Um, out in the wild. That's the octopus. So it's actually quite a number of days before those sharks even begin to feel hungry again. In fact, it's actually quite common for them to feed really well only once every two weeks. Oh, look at it. Look up. Look up. How are they going to get better?
One of the questions I'm most often asked is, why don't the sharks eat the little fish in the tank? And it is simply because of that efficient digestive system of theirs and the amount of food that they're fed. They're a little bit like fat, lazy house cats that always have a bowl of food waiting for it at home. These guys with their belly full of fish are no more likely to chase after those little fish in the coral work than a fat, lazy house cat is to go chasing after mice when it knows that there's a bowl of food waiting for it. So sharks are what we like to call a living fossil. The reason for this is because they've been on Earth for about 450 million years. That actually predates the arrival of dinosaurs on Earth by 150 million years. Sharks that really haven't changed very much in that time. Really, most of them have, are just smaller than they would have been in prehistory. I can't see. The megalodon, a prehistoric shark, was probably twice the size of this building. The largest sharks today, the basking sharks and whale sharks. The whale shark is actually larger than a school bus.